eight years in the reefing hobby and I've just found out that phosphates really aren't a thing and I can get rid of them in a matter of minutes. Stay tuned. Hi guys, welcome back to Paul UK Reefer. So today I'm gonna to talk a bit about phosphates in the reef aquarium and how to reduce them. If you like reefing content, please consider subscribing to the channel. And I put out a video most weeks about all sorts of things to do with reef aquarium and the equipment that goes in it. So phosphates in the reef aquarium are something that occurs from uh, fish waste and fish food mainly. And um, it's absolutely needed in the aquarium. We need to have some level of phosphate in there. Without it, all sorts of problem algaes can occur and coral growth can be inhibited. Too much phosphate, however, can also inhibit coral growth, um, promote fish illness, and all round give you a headache while looking after your tank. So we're looking at phosphate levels in a reef aquarium of about 0.03 parts per million, all the way up to around 0.08 or nine. They're considered widely to be reasonable levels of phosphate in the reef aquarium where they're not too close to being absolute zero and they're not too high. Another outcome of really high phosphates will be algae, problem algae and film on the glass. So it's definitely something you need to keep check weekly. There are a few different ways of reducing high phosphate levels in the reef aquarium. One of them and the main one would be water changes because that dilutes the, the amount of phosphate in the water immediately. There's also other ways using things like Roophos or GFO, which is granular ferric oxide, and that um, bounds up the phosphate as the water goes through the material. I've been using that latter route for a number of years now, and it's reasonably successful, but it is quite expensive and also quite difficult to keep maintain. Uh, it, also, it can also be quite messy. So I've never been completely happy with it. Um, and on this current aquarium, I've been getting high phosphate levels because I feed reasonably high levels of food because of the size of the fish. And also because I feed and sheets of nori or seaweed and they're really high in phosphate content. So I was on a live stream the other week with a couple of fellow reefers and one of the guys on there who's called Reefing With O, Seymour, thanks for the tip, decided, uh, mentioned a, a product that had been in the market and I've known about for many years. And it's just one that I never seem to have tried and I, and I really don't know why. So the product I'm referring to is by Blue Life, a company in the US, and it's called Phosphate RX. It's something that um, a reefer that I've watched for many years called Milev's Reef has been using and absolutely swears by. For some reason, I just never really considered it. This is the bottle of it, tiny little bottle. It's around 25 pounds, but it will last a very, very long time. Now this is a form of lanthanum chloride, which is quite a dangerous um, liquid if, when, when put in the reef aquarium, if not used correctly. So some of the, the reasons why it works so well is it does similar to the, to the rubber foss in that it enters the reef aquarium in a drop form and it instantly binds up phosphate in the water and turns it into a particulate or a tiny white particulate. The best thing to do is to try and remove such particulates with filter socks or filter media because otherwise they'll float around in your tank and they could become um, an irritant to the fish or the corals. That said, so many people use this product and don't do that and it, say that it dissipates in a matter of days and never really have any problems with it. I prefer to use the this filter sock route and on my tank behind me, the Reefer 425 XL, I have a Clarity 3000 filter roller included in it and installed inside of it. So how do I apply this? Application of Phosphate RX is done in drop form by the dropper directly from the bottle. Uh, the best way to do this is to do it close to the area where the filter socks are so that it enters the water column, removes the phosphate, but also the filter sock binds up the particulates that it forms to remove the phosphate from the water. Um, in tanks where a clarity filter is installed or some filter socks, it's best to do that just before that section so that it hits the water content and hits them straight away. With a filter sock in, uh, a filter roller included, I was advised to do it straight into the overflow. So there's a little hole in the overflow, uh, like so, that I drop the drop straight in. You can instantly hear the clarity start rolling or just slightly adjusting the moment it hits it because it's increasing the amount of flocculent hitting the water. So that's worked really well. Now, to say the results were outstanding is an understatement. On my first trial of using this product, I use the calculations online. There's a couple of websites that do it for you. My strict advice is to always take extreme care when you're using products like this in your reef aquarium. Over uh, use of it can cause trouble for the fish breathing and it can wipe your tank out. So this product is not to be taken lighthearted. 
And as with any products we put in our reef aquarium, it's always advisable to start with very, very small doses. Test before and test after 24 hours and see what difference is made before adding slightly more. So I used this approach with this tank. I had 0.24 phosphate levels, parts per million phosphates in the tank, which is really too high, even with doing weekly water changes and even with having rhyophos in there. So that's suggesting that them means and are not keeping up with the demand and the over amount of uh, fish food and, and seaweed that I'm feeding. Now I've decided that the level I'm feeding I'm comfortable with and I want the, the aquarium to work with it. So I dosed 10 drops, yes only 10 drops into the overflow with this bottle and I tested the reef aquarium 24 hours later and I had 0.08 phosphate levels. So it's already down to a level that was desirable for my reef aquarium. I'm now going to drop another three drops in it and then go back 24 hours later. And at that point, I'm expecting it to be around 0.03 or 4, which is great. So I'll let you know how that goes. Okay, so a quick update. It's now 24 hours later and my reef tank is at 0.04 parts per million phosphate. It's absolutely perfect. I've seen no particulates in the water. Fish and corals are happy and the phosphate levels are down. A few drops and that was it. So, so happy I found this product. It's really amazing to me that after eight years in the hobby, products that have been around for so long can just pop up and really help you with controlling your fish tank and, and really help out. This is definitely one of them. I'm not sponsored in any way and it's one that I bought with my own money. So this is an honest account of my use of it and I'll continue to keep you updated in future videos. Please, please, please do take care when using this product because it can cause harm to your animals and your fish tank. I can't stress that enough, but consider using it. It's made my life a lot easier. I'm no longer messing around with row of foss in a reactor and having to clean and tidy it and and all the stuff that goes with it so so far it's worked really really well and i just wanted to share that with everyone uh, because they might i know there's a few of you out there that have having similar issues to me so i hope that was helpful if it was please like comment if i've said anything that you disagree with let me know and if you've got any other advice please do share because uh, each of these videos ends up being a learning experience for me as well and i really appreciate you watching and i'll see you soon